I always get these questions. What's some exercises I can do to increase hand speed? How can I increase hand speed? How can I get faster? seems to be the, the driving factor for a lot of players is they think, you know, faster, faster, faster. Even though I played a gig the other day and none of the songs were above 80 BPM. So playing fast didn't help me at all there. Uh, but that seems to be the push for a lot of people. So my answer is never one that they like because uh, I always point back to technique out of all of my years of teaching and um, especially in the more recent years when I'm getting just a, a lot more students than I was accustomed to in person. Um, I'm seeing a lot of the same trends, and I have never dissected a, uh, a hand speed issue that didn't have to do with uh, an underlying technique, like the bedrock, the foundation of what they're playing. See, uh, if you practice the correct technique, the speed is going to come naturally because we're falling in line with what's happening naturally anyway, okay? And so it's just picking apart where is the technique falling apart and how can we fix it so that we can go faster? Uh, it just, you have to get in line. Speed is a natural byproduct of learning something well. And I was having this discussion with somebody on Instagram the other day, and they said, you know, no, you gotta run these speed exercises. You gotta, you know, it's not the same thing. It's not a natural byproduct. You have to work on speed and push it. You don't. Speed is not something you have to push for. It's something that will happen naturally if you'll fall in line. An example was giving of, you don't become a better sprinter by walking your dog. And no, you do not, because, it's two completely different techniques. Walking and sprinting are two completely different techniques. So there's no way to become a better sprinter. Uh-oh, people are texting me. Uh, by walking, right? We have to get into the motions of what are what are what is the motions of sprinting? What's the underlying technique? So it's the same with drumming, all right? So let's get to this. Let's take molar stroke, for instance, all right? And I'm going to turn this on airplane mode. Let's take molar stroke. And this is not going to be a lesson on the molar stroke. The molar stroke is simply getting in line with what's happening naturally. There's rebound that happens whenever I throw that stick. So if I can redirect that energy into multiple strokes for me, then bonus, right? So we have two stroke molar, we have three stroke, four, five, we can go to six, we can go as, as much as we want. But the idea is that we're getting in line with what's already happening naturally, right? That old guy Newton, right? He had some, he had some pretty uh, smart ideas. You know, an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by another uh, object. These are laws, right? The, 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 an object that's put into motion will stay in motion unless acted upon upon outside forces. For every uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I hit this, there's the reaction's gonna be, the stick's gonna go back. If I automatically disappear, my hand goes away, gravity goes away, all everything goes away. Way, this would continue in the same trajectory forever unless something else acted upon it. These are laws, and if we get in line with these laws of motion, things are a lot easier. Molar helps us do that. So a problem I had was transitioning from three strokes to four stroke molar. So one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four. And that matters because when we're doing accent patterns, transitioning in between those. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. If we're doing different accent patterns. But I found, I came up with this exercise I'm about to show you, and I found that the problem wasn't, I couldn't go fast enough, the problem was the transition of the technique. And so what we do to do this, this, this exercise consists of four three-stroke uh, molars, and then one four strokes. It's gonna go one, two, three, 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 four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, notice though, I'm doing this with very little effort. So the idea is very slowly to isolate the movements. After I can do that, then I'm going to four stroke. And we're gonna do it in the left hand. And we isolate the movement and go very, very slowly. And if we do that slowly and perfect the technique, the speed comes naturally. For me to speed it up, right, I'm condensing the motion. But the speed comes naturally. All too often we push for speed and it, it's just not necessary. Uh, let me give you two examples, okay? Focus, how do we get focus? Do we get focus? The more you try to focus, does that help? For instance, you're in a busy coffee shop and you need to focus. Does it help to just try, try, try? It seems the more I tried, the less I focus. 
How do we focus? We take things away. So remove yourself, put yourself in a quiet room. You're in the same state of mind with no distractions and all of a sudden you can focus and study, right? Let's take gravity. Gravity is a law, it's happening. We have the right, um, the right circumstances for gravity to exist here on the earth, okay? It would be like me needing to make gravity happen, to force gravity, hanging from the limb of a tree. And I'm just gonna hang there until I bring the tree limb down to the ground. I don't understand the laws of gravity. If I'll just let go and participate, I'll drop to the ground, right? It's the difference of forcing something versus not forcing something. So fall in line with the technique, fix the technique, and you're going to naturally increase in speed as we condense that technique. So I have that and I'm working on, on the three stroke, then the four stroke, then I'm gonna put them together into this. So you, you can check out the sheet music. If you want the sheet music for this exercise, the download link is below this in the video description as well as I'm gonna pin a comment for you. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now I'm not gonna go into teaching the molar. This is just an exercise that would use the molar. If you want some lessons on that, on the website, I've got a whole course on that. You can check that out in the members area. Left hand, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and I'm gonna slowly condense that and speed it up. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. You're like, Stephen, that's great, but how does that hand speed? If I throw them in tandem, if I alternate them doing the same pattern, Okay? The speed comes naturally as I condense the motion. But just learning this allows me to go that quickly, isolating the technique, working the technique. The technique is king when it comes to anything with drumming. I can't stress that enough. Again, I've never diagnosed a hand problem with speed that didn't come back to technique. And nobody likes to hear that because it's a long haul to fix those types of things. Now, once we do that, I realize, right, we have that accent pattern. So if I'm playing here, Left hand. Okay, same accent pattern. What I noticed was, okay, cool, if I just throw it after the second rebound and then start my left hand and do the same accent pattern, we now have something like this. Okay, one, a two, and a E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Same accent pattern, I'm just offsetting it. Okay, now if I go a little bit further, and I'll demonstrate these slower and then faster so you can check them out. If I go a little bit further and I throw it, throw the left hand after the third rebound, one, two, three. We have the same accent pattern, but now it's gonna create a different accent uh, pattern within the measure. So one E and, one E and, and then we throw that. And that's gonna result in Same accent pattern. Up. Okay. Here's the, here we, here's the, let me get this to a click so I can show you that. It'll be easier. So, again, I didn't really plan on doing this. I just been thinking about it. So let's say we're going at eight notes at 75 BPM. Three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three four e and a. Now we get the first accent pattern. Three and four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. 
So the second accent pattern, but it's going to be the same accent pattern with any chan. We're just offsetting it a little bit. One, two, three, four. So here's the original. All of that comes from, and when I speed it up, it all comes from just learning the technique well. All right, so if we go to now that third accent pattern, oh. Now, a molar stroke is made for faster tempos because we can get more bang for our buck whenever we're playing this. So if I start to slow this, or if I start to speed this up, uh, it becomes a lot of fun. But again, naturally, I wrote this exercise after I was able to play this technique. And the exercise came very naturally. And what happened was, when it came to that turnaround, that was the place I was having the issue. But I could play each individual thing. It was the going in between them, okay? So when you're working through this exercise, realize that any problems you have are most likely technique oriented. You need to slow them down and deal with the technique first. Always in your practice time, deal with the technique. So let's check this out, 75 BPM, I'll play the whole exercise for you. If you wanna download that, there is, a, um, there is a download link below this in the comments. You can check that out. So, play the exercise for you. Three and four and one e and a two e and a e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a four e and a. We're gonna do it again after that. So it's gonna be one measure each of the accent pattern on each hand, then two measures of accent pattern number one, then offset it, two measures of that, offset it, two measures of that. Three, and again. Four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, e and a, four e and a. And we could speed that up a little bit. So I'll speed that up and show you what that sounds like. But very quickly, the speed comes naturally if you'll just learn that underlying technique. So I spent months throwing one hand at a time. Okay? And this is not, it's the same with all techniques. You know, say you wanted to do German grip finger control and that same accent pattern in the right hand with molar. It takes me practicing this, individual fingers all throughout that. Let's say we wanted to do French grip. With my left hand, I found that these two were the culprit for so long, so I had to go very slowly, get control with them, and then once I had that, build it back up, and everything immediately got better when I isolated the issue. So we can do that same accent pattern with French grip uh, and left hand finger control. It's 
it's all different techniques, but the technique is the king. We're not, we're not pushing for speed. You push for speed, you're gonna tense up and you're gonna screw it up, all right? So uh, let me speed this up for you and I'll play it through quicker. Let's do just 100 BPM. One, two, three, four. So there we go, it's a quick exercise, but the magic's not in any exercise. The magic is in the underlying technique with which you play that exercise, okay? So work on the technique. If you find you're having a problem with the exercise, it's not, there's no magic exercise. It is simply, you need to work the underlying technique more. If you will follow and push after the technique, the speed will come naturally. Just like if you're in a busy room, you remove things from that room and your focus comes naturally. If you let gravity happen, it happens naturally. Don't fight it. Fall in line with what's going on. And it's going to be a lot easier. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should do that. There's a ton going on. I'm uploading several times a week as well. If you want the sheet music for this, it's below in the comments as well as in, I'm going to pin a comment there. It's in the comments in the video description. And uh, leave me a comment, by the way. Let me know you stopped by and share this with somebody if you think it may help them. But whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.